everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we're going to dye some variegated and speckled yarn. Here in my catering steam pan, I have eight cups of water, and I'm adding two tablespoons of white vinegar. We are on top of my electric hot plate, which should slowly start heating up this water. But I want to add some yarn to our water, and maybe we'll add more water. We'll see what the water level looks like. Uh, and how we feel about it. The yarn we're going to dye today is Knit Picks Hawthorne DK. This yarn is 80% Superwash Fine Highland Wool, 20% Polyamid, and I'm bringing over 300 grams of yarn total and adding it to our dye bath, trying to both spread things out but scrunch it in a nice way. So eight cups of water is enough water that uh, we have some of our yarn above the surface and so I think I'm gonna want to add more. So I'm gonna make up another container with eight cups of water and two tablespoons of white vinegar. Okay, and I'm not gonna add all of this water. So I'm gonna add some more. Um, maybe I added about four cups of this mixture, so we're at probably six tablespoons of white vinegar and 12 cups of water. And so now the yarn is really floating, and as we add dye, we should be able to work it through a little bit better, but we'll see. And so I guess I just have to wait for this to heat up. But while we wait, let's think about our colors for today. Last night I got a comment requesting a color combination that had magenta on one side, a vivid green on the other, maybe some bright yellow in the middle, and some rusty dark violet speckles. And so I pulled Dharma Acid Dyes in Deep Magenta, Brilliant Yellow, Sour Apple for our three main colors, and then Espresso Bean leans purplish, uh, but isn't a vibrant purple, it's more of a and not quite rusty, but it's sort of a more brownie purple. And so I pulled this for a speckle color. I haven't yet decided if I want to try to do some citric acid speckles or if I want to speckle straight with the espresso bean dye. I think we're going to see what the colors are doing and how they're speaking to me and how we want to proceed. But this is the palette that I'm planning with. I'm playing with. Now, with yellow in the middle of these colors, we likely will end up with some orange, but who knows? We'll see where we end up. And if you want to learn more about any of my tools, dyes, or equipment, I do have links and affiliate links down in the video description, and I might earn a commission if you make a purchase through one of my links. Since I'm planning to apply straight dye powder directly onto our yarn, I want a yarn mop, so that way when I have dye on my gloved fingertips, I can wipe that onto the yarn. And then this will be a skein that I will steam set later on, but it's sort of a bonus skein of yarn, leaving no dye behind. And this yarn is Knit Pick Stroll, 75% Superwash Merino Wool, 25% Nylon, and I pre-soaked it in some plain tap water, and I should add acid to it. So I'm going to just take a tablespoon of white vinegar, put that on, and then <laughs> there's not that much water in here, but I'm going to try to squish it. <laughs> and this is me adding acid onto our yarn mop today. Uh, it'll get like acid distributed to it, and if need be, I'll either be steam setting it, or sometimes I take these, these yarn mops and I add them to the dye bath. So we'll see where we end up with this one. But this should be just off camera, slightly out of view. I'm now wearing my Deluxe Rubber Respirator Mask, so my voice is more muffled. You know, I debated this a little bit, but let's start in the middle with some Brilliant Yellow. And I'm planning on spreading this out more. I'm not planning on leaving this as speckles, but I'm speckling the dye out since we're applying the dye powder, so that way it doesn't clump. And whenever I am not using the dye container, I always close it both so moisture doesn't get in, but also uh, so that way I don't risk spilling it. And then I can come in with my spoon and sort of mix this dye up. And we could end up with some speckles, although yellow and yellow speckles are quite subtle. But because we have the amount of water in here we do, 
we should be getting dye through multiple layers of the yarn. Whereas if the water level were super low, we wouldn't be able to work these colors through quite as much. And this is why I'm here pressing it more, because this color will start striking at some point, but uh, the more coverage you can get at the beginning, the easier that makes things. Now, the downside that I can see right now with the colors that I'm planning on using is that if I try to speckle on this, it might muddy things up a lot, but we're gonna take things one step at a time. And I'm coming in now with Sour Apple, which is a beautiful bright green. I would almost call it more of a grass green versus apple green. Oof, but that is so pretty. Part of me wants to let this sit a moment. Although I know that this is a color that spreads out a lot, but I'm curious if I let this sit for like one minute before I move it, will we get some green on green speckles down there? Because I think that would be really, really fun. So I'm going to leave that for now and we'll come back to it. And now the deep magenta, I'm inclined to do the same thing. Notice I'm trying to leave um, some space between the yarn and dye that I'm adding and the yellow because I know colors will spread, uh, but I want to give it an opportunity to not just completely overtake the yellow. Okay. I'll probably add more dye on both of those areas, but yeah, I'm just very curious about how things may spread and what I will feel. This will also give me a feel for how quickly colors are striking. Okay, but there we go. The green actually struck. I mean, you can see there's still green in the water, but it struck pretty quickly, um, which is fun. And I'm okay if there's some white left. Uh, our deep magenta is striking a little bit slower than the green. It's definitely spreading more, but giving it like that minute to sit uh, definitely gives it a little bit of some like speckly, splotchy feel, which I'm kind of living for right now. I think that that is super pretty. Gosh, I'm really enjoying this. Okay. Now I'm going to come in with some more sour apple, but this time I'm not going to wait, or at least not as long. So this is going to deepen the green over here, but this sort of green on green speckle that hopefully will build up is really pretty. And as time goes on, and as we get closer to the end, we can add more yellow. Um, goodness. I'm liking this. I'm even enjoying the pastel sort of in the middle. And I'm a little nervous about bringing the espresso bean in. But I want to do it because that's part of what intrigued me. So this is probably going to spread a lot, but I'm coming in and I'm trying to be very light. And I have a feeling the color will be dark. It might spread and that's okay. Go towards the edge. There are definitely some streaks. And maybe I should focus, I did a little bit all over the yellow, maybe I should have focused a little more at this intermediate area between the colors. Okay, but we're going to see what that does. <laughs> I mean, it is actually sort of like a 
rust, I mean, I don't know about rusty, but it is a deep purpley color. It's gonna take away from some of the yellow, but I don't mind it. I think that I'll do just a little bit in the center of the yellow, but try to focus it a little bit more on those borders. Oh, but I'm so curious to hear what you guys think. Okay, I now want to wait five minutes before I do anything to mess with this more. Uh, I can see some of this, these speckles from the espresso being spreading a bit. There's reds in there, purpley colors in there. Uh, so I'll come back in five minutes. I'm not quite sure how I feel about the espresso speckles, but we're gonna roll with it. The greens look good. There might be, some of that color might spread. The pinks are also looking pretty good. Okay, let's flip the yarn. And since we're so steamy, I'm also gonna reduce the heat. And we'll see what our coverage is like. Okay, you know what? It's not bad because it's good to see some amount of color already on the other side. There's gonna be a patchiness to our colorways today and we are gonna need to do multiple flips because I can see, like even just when I flip this, that there's some colors that are, uh, there's some areas of the yarn and now like as that's moving that are gonna be under other areas and so it's just gonna take a little bit of time to get everything where we want it to be. But as I said, let's carry on. You know, patchy is a subjective term because you might say, I might say patchy when I might also say mottled and dimension. And so I like it when a color isn't flat and perfectly even, but that's my own personal preference. And you might have a different preference, which is just as valid and beautiful and okay. As I was adding the colors, I tried to wait five minutes in between each flip just to give the colors a little bit of time to strike. And I did pop the yarn mop into a steamer basket every once in a while for that five minute period, just so that way I could continue to be able to add color on there without it spreading out too much. As the number of flips went on, I didn't need to add nearly as much dye to help get the coverage. It's great that we have the water volume in here, so that way uh, we are getting the coverage that we are seeing. But I carried on until I was satisfied with the coverage and then let everything heat for 30 minutes from the last time I added dye to finish setting the color. So 30 minutes are up and I'm already gonna turn off and unplug my hot plate. But I'm gonna go ahead and remove the yarn now so it can cool so we can wash it. I think the whole colorway is a little more muted than I originally planned for, but she's also so pretty. Oh my gosh. And our yarn mop, here I can also turn off the pot, is also completely stunning. Um, uh, the pops of dark color in here I think give it lovely contrast, but I'm also gonna set this aside to cool completely and we'll wash all the yarn together in a little bit. Let's wash our quite tropical feeling yarn. And now that I'm picking it up, I'm realizing it might still be a little warm, but I'm not gonna worry about that. Everything is super washed. If this was non-super washed, I would worry more about going from a little bit warm to cool, but I don't think that that's something we need to be worried about here today. And the good news is we're not seeing any color bleeding. I get a lot more nervous about bleeding when I'm doing something on the countertop, but really, whenever you're using dry dye powder, there's a chance that some powder could be left on the surface, and then you could end up with some bleeding. But anyway, I'm gonna fill up the basin. Woohoo! Oh yeah. We're good. I'm gonna rinse this out one more time, but we're seeing no bleeding, not even with, wait, did I add soap? I'm washing a lot of yarn back to back. I feel like I added soap. <laughs> there were bubbles at least. So if I didn't add soap, there was soap in there. But anyway, 
I am going to rinse this one more time, put the yarn through my spin dryer to spin out a lot of that liquid, and then, well, we'll hang it up to dry so we can see what the finished yarn looks like. Here is the finished dry yarn, and I think that the yellow is less vibrant because of those espresso bean speckles, but I honestly don't mind and I like the speckles so much more now that the yarn is dry. Espresso bean never really feels brown to me, but turns out if you add yellow to a purplish brown, you get more of a brown. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny to me, but this yarn is so fun. This video is an example of how I really do pay attention to your comments and suggestions. Sure, this particular comment came from a post where I specifically asked for requests, but feel free to leave your requests on any video. I do try to keep track of color suggestions and video ideas, so that way I can take the risks and do the experiments before you do, so then you can decide what you like, what you don't like, before you try your own dyeing projects yourself. And you don't even have to try things yourself. If you want, you can go and check out the yarn that I've dyed and bring some home in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. You can find links in the video description. The colors may be the same, but our yarn mop has a really different character than our main colorway. And that's because even though it has the same colors, even though it all they all have white showing through, the color placement here is completely random. So when you knit with it, or crochet or weave, you're less likely to have pooling. The color placement will be more random overall. Whereas our more variegated colors, depending on your gauge and the number of stitches for each round or row, you could get some pooling. And so it's just a different type of colorway overall. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I have dyed over a thousand different colorways over the years. And I mean, that's fairly mind-boggling to me that I've dyed so many different colorways. But in all these different videos, there are times where I might dye a colorway that is similar to something I've created in the past. But this pink, green, and yellow speckled colorway, I think is unique to anything I've dyed before. And sometimes I enjoy doing color challenges where I'll take one color palette and dye multiple different kinds of colorways from it. And the thing about that that is so much fun is that it also gives an example how you can imagine that if you give an inspiration photo or a color palette to multiple different dyers, they could create things that are similar or that are quite different. And all of that is just so much fun. Please subscribe and do all the youtube -y things. Smash that follow button. But as my kids would say, don't smash your devices. <laughs> we have so much fun over here playing with color and yarn, different yarn bases, different fiber contents, different dye brands. And yeah, it's a lot of fun and I truly love what I do. And this is just my absolute happy place. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching.